Hello, my dear students. I'm so glad you're following your brain and coming back each week for more information on menopause and Alzheimer's disease. Or could it be that you're following your heart? Hmm, we'll have to ponder that a bit. This is video number 258, and it's the 23rd video in the Alzheimer's unit here at Menopause University. Did you ever think there would be so many videos on Alzheimer's? And we're not even close to the end of the unit yet. Nope, I've still got all sorts of management options to present for reducing your risk of Alzheimer's. In my book, all of chapter 33 is on Alzheimer's. It's great to read the book alongside watching these videos. Today, we're gonna to address something very interesting. We're going to compare and contrast your head and your heart, or more accurately, your brain and your heart. But head versus heart sounds catchier. And while I'm very unfond of baseball caps on just about anybody, I'm wearing one today because it was the only hat I could find with a heart on it to symbolize the head-heart dichotomy. But then, I decided that if I'm going to have a heart on my head, I need to also have a head or brain on my heart. So I made this necklace out of a brain model. It's a brain and I just put it on a string, on a ribbon. <laughs> and then since the heart on the baseball cap was merely a boring, I love you heart, I decided to add this three dimensional model to it to make it more interesting. <laughs> My brain works in very strange ways. <laughs> now, you should watch this particular video because it's going to give you some shortcuts for preventing Alzheimer's. Have you ever noticed how much people compare and contrast their head and their heart? There are so many references to following your head versus your heart, listening to your head versus your heart, thinking with your head versus your heart, distinguishing your head from your heart. There are even derogatory statements about the two, like the one that claims that women have their heart in their vagina and men have their brain in their penis. I didn't make that up, but there's some truth in it, don't you think? But whether you're contemplating how to make good, a good decision about something or how to let your feelings guide you, there's something interesting about all these efforts to compare and contrast your head and your heart. In this menopause education, two of the most significant diseases that are associated with estrogen deficiency at postmenopause have to do with your head and your heart. They are Alzheimer's disease and heart attack. And the reason I'm bringing them up today is because da 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 da, many of the risks factors for Alzheimer's disease are the very same as those for heart attack. Back in video number 245 on risk factors for Alzheimer's disease, I gave you a great big list of all the risk factors. If you've been watching my videos in order, you'll recognize it. It looks like this. There is a total of 26 risk factors in all. And can you believe that 14 of the risk factors for Alzheimer's are the very same as those for heart attack? So the majority of risks for a heart attack are also risks for Alzheimer's. Now, that may thrill you or it may bother you. It will thrill you if you don't have high risk for either disease. But it will bother you if you have a high risk for either disease. But on the flip side, if you have a high risk for either disease, you should be really happy to discover that everything you do to decrease your risk for one will also decrease your risk for the other. In the unit on heart attack, which included 26 videos from video number 160 to video 185, I gave you 17 separate videos on management options for reducing your risk and, pre of and preventing a heart attack. Of course, there's no way I can repeat all of that here. So if you haven't watched the videos in the heart attack unit, do so. <clears throat> what I will do here is explain why you can reduce your risk 
of Alzheimer's by reducing your risk of a heart attack. In the unit on heart attack, you learn that a heart attack is really all about the arteries that carry blood to your heart. The heart itself doesn't cause the problem. Your heart is the victim of the actual problem. It's the result of a sudden constriction in the blood flow to your heart. The part of your heart beyond the constricted area dies. And death of heart tissue is called a heart attack. So why does the heart tissue die? Because your blood carries oxygen. Any part of your body that doesn't get enough oxygen dies. So when an artery carrying blood to your heart suddenly becomes significantly constricted, it gets no oxygen. In essence, it suffocates. You also learn that a stroke is the same thing as a heart attack, but the blood vessel that suddenly constricts is an artery going to your brain. So a stroke is death of brain tissue due to lack of oxygen. So both heart attack and stroke are due to a sudden constriction in the oxygen supply to your heart or your head. That's why they both occur suddenly. They are both emergencies. They both create obvious symptoms and really get your attention right then and there. Well, what is Alzheimer's then? Alzheimer's does not constitute a medical emergency in which you have sudden symptoms. It doesn't involve a sudden constriction in an artery going to your brain. So how can it be that the risk factors for a heart attack are also the risk factors for Alzheimer's? Well, it all boils down to speed. Even though Alzheimer's does not occur suddenly, and even though it does not create a medical emergency, it does involve brain death. And that brain death is due to inadequate oxygen going to your brain. It's just a whole lot slower. And your brain requires a whole lot more of your body's energy than any other part of your body. And part of that energy comes in the form of oxygen. In other words, your brain needs more oxygen than other parts of your body. I guess you could say that your brain is an oxygen hog. And all the functions of your brain depend on having enough oxygen. So way back in the very first Alzheimer's video, which was video 236, I taught you about the neuron, which is the basic building block of your brain. Oxygen is required for two neurons to connect. And then it's required for another neuron to connect. Every single step of brain buildup that I taught you in video 238 requires huge quantities of oxygen, even though each process is occurring on a microscopic scale. So oxygen deprivation, rather than occurring suddenly and causing sudden death of a large region of brain tissue like a stroke, instead interferes with each of these microscopic steps. And the result is brain breakdown. So you contribute to either brain buildup or brain breakdown with everything you do. And that's why the management options for preventing Alzheimer's are so vast. They include all sorts of brain activities, avoiding anything that inhibits blood and oxygen flow to your brain, exercise, lifestyle habits, diet, vitamins, minerals, and supplements, herbs, hormonal medications, and non-hormonal medications. And it turns out that all the management options that increase the flow of blood and oxygen to your heart also increase it to your brain. So here's one instance 
in which you don't have to choose between your brain and your heart. Here's one instance in which following either or listening to either or thinking or feeling with either suffices for both. What are the basic benefits and principles of this whole menopause education? Is that some management options serve more than one purpose. As I go through each disease individually and give you all your options for preventing that particular disease, you might feel a little overwhelmed. And if you're at high risk for more than one disease, you might find it difficult to home in on the best management options for you. So that is why I created this slide chart. I've shown this to you before. It's a slide chart that enables you to designate the diseases for which you are at high risk. And you do that by simply answering yes or no to these six questions, all of which are the same except that they change the disease. Each one is, are you at risk for a certain disease? And you answer yes or no for each disease. And as you do so, you follow your yes and no answers all the way down to a number that is lined up with your last yes or no answer. And then you pull out this slide chart so that the little black arrow lines up with that last number. And then you're ready to flip the whole thing over. And here what you see is you see five categories of management options. There's diet and lifestyle, vitamins and minerals, herbs and botanicals, hormonal medications, and non-hormonal medications. And each category has two columns of options. And you'll see a little black dot next to every option that will help you lower your risk for the diseases that you pose, that pose most risk for you. The slide chart captures the same overall concept that I've explained here today with regard to having the overlapping risk factors for heart attack and Alzheimer's. In essence, it makes it easier for you to meet your goals. So you can buy the slide chart at menopausetailor.me, or you can schedule a consultation at menopausetailor.me, or you can go back and review all the heart attack videos on management options. Regardless of how you do it, be sure to take advantage of the fact that all the management options for preventing a heart attack also serve to prevent Alzheimer's. And the great thing is that you have control over most of them. In large measure, with both heart attack and Alzheimer's, what happens to you is up to you. So follow your heart and your head and reduce your risk for damage to both. All right, that's it for today. Next week, I will present the first of two videos on exercise for preventing Alzheimer's, physical exercise rather than mental exercise. Until then, subscribe and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Bye.